I'm Katie De La Vega. I'm a music education major and I'm I study voice and I'm a sophomore here at Southwestern. Um, so what is the reason that you wanted to um, study the the trois chansons? Which I can't say. <laughs> well we studied it in my music literature class and I found the story to be really interesting about Billy and also I was going to write a paper on it, so I decided to just completely be drowned in <laughs> ability. Yeah. So, um, what what's kind of the first things that struck you about the pieces? Well, the story is really interesting because of the three different sections of her life uh -huh. and how she, you know, starts out as this young girl that is needing somebody to love her to this person that is completely being manipulated by a man and eventually turns into a lesbian and just completely, you know, ignores men completely, so. Um, and the the three songs that you sang are from the first part of her life, right? Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit about, about those songs? Mm -hmm. The first one is La Fute de Pan, which is about um, the time when she first met her boyfriend and she is becoming completely in love with him. It's about them sneaking out together and she just explores his body, he explores hers, and um, she decides then that that's when she wants to pursue him. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is called? Is Le Chevalure, uh -huh. which uh, means her hair, which also actually represents their sexual relationship. Um, in that he predicts what he sees happening in their relationship, which is him manipulating her and actually, in fact, raping her. And he talks about her body and what he's going to do to it. And it's graphic, but it's also very symbolic. Okay, and the third one? And the third one is Le Tombeau de Nayade. And that one is at the very end of the first stage of her life. And that's when she's seeking help from his abuse and she looks to the naiads, which represent humbleness and an escape from the horror that he causes her. And so she's searching for them, and he pretty much lies and tells her that they're dead and there's no hope for her, and she's stuck with him forever. Um, so as you started researching the piece, because you wrote your paper on it, what did you find, um, what, what things did you start to find out about it that, that were pretty cool? Or what did your paper end up being about? Well, I focused on the third one, which was La Tombeau de Nayad, and um, I found it to be very interesting in how much text painting he used, and um, um, like, for example, when they talk about how she's crying for help, like, the soprano line just literally, like, cries for help and, uh -huh. um, you know, goes into a very high note that comes back down into a low note, and... Um, I guess that's what I found really interesting is Debussy really paid attention to Pierre Louis' um, writing and made made a lot of sense out of the text by using like musical emotions.